Childbirth in the animal kingdom is not easy. Things get even tougher for certain animals when they give birth. From having eggs implanted in a mother's back, to fish carrying their young in their mouths, and how about the naked mole rat queen? Take a deep breath because these animal births are intense. 18. Suriname Toads For the Suriname toad, mothers have to deal with quite a lot. First off, they don't carry their young deep inside their bodies, like most animals do. Instead, their eggs incubate in the skin on the mother's back. Yes, you heard that right. During mating, the frogs swim around in a sort of dance. The male lies on his back and the female lies on top of him, facing down. The skin on her back will swell. Toads mate through their cloacae, which is an opening that serves as both a reproductive organ and waste output. The eggs are implanted in the skin on the mother's back. It takes about a full day for the eggs to sink into her skin deep enough to incubate. Even crazier, once the tadpoles hatch, they actually stay within their honeycomb-shaped chambers until they grow into toadlets. You may be wondering how they breathe. If you've ever seen a tadpole, you'll know they have tails. These tails are used during this stage for them to breathe, while they are still growing inside their mom's skin. Once they have matured into essentially miniature versions of their moms, they emerge from their mom's skin and start their lives. The mother toad will shed the broken skin, and soon she will be ready to mate again. How cool is that? 17. Spotted Hyenas If you have female reproductive organs, this story may make you squirm a bit. Don't say we didn't warn you. Spotted hyenas have probably the most traumatizing birth process that we can imagine. The hyenas have a surprisingly complex mating routine. The females tend to prefer passive males, younger than themselves. Aggressive males don't have as much success mating as passive males. They also tend to do their business in private. Female hyenas have a clitoris, which is sometimes called a pseudopenis, and that's where copulation occurs. For some reason, their vaginas are not used for mating. Some experts believe this is a way that hyenas have developed to protect females from forced mating. She needs to allow the male to enter by retracting her clitoris. Sometimes mating itself can be repeated over a few hours to ensure pregnancy. Hyena's gestation period is quite short, just over 100 days. Interestingly, older and more dominant female hyenas actually have a physical difference during pregnancy compared to younger and more passive females. The more dominant a pregnant hyena is, the more androgen her cubs will receive in utero. This could be linked to how females have evolved to act in traditionally masculine ways, as far as the animal kingdom goes. When it's time to have the babies, the cubs are actually born through the same opening mating happened, through the clitoris. Keep in mind, this organ is quite narrow. It actually is forced to burst during birth. It does heal, but it can take weeks. Ouch. 16. Seahorses did you know that male seahorses are the ones who become pregnant and give birth? Along with the closely related sea dragon, this is the only type of animal that has evolved this way. And as it turns out, it's even more remarkable and complex than we originally thought. In 2022, a group of researchers exposed male seahorses to the hormone oxytocin, a very important chemical that aids in labor and birth. When the non-pregnant males were exposed, they actually started displaying labor-like behavior. That means that they actually operate pretty similarly to how females of other species do when they give birth. Male seahorses have a pouch in the tail that acts like a uterus. It's made partly of smooth muscle, just like a uterus. However, it's a bit more complex than that. When these guys are pregnant and ready to give birth, they use not just the smooth muscle in their brood pouches, but also skeletal muscle. This combination allows the expulsion of the babies. You may be wondering, who produces the eggs in this situation? For seahorses, females produce eggs, and they are transmitted to the males during mating. Once they are safely housed in this brood pouch, the male will carry them, just like a mother of a different species would. They control the egg's temperature, and their bodies provide nutrients for proper growth. 15. Cichlids While it may seem like a violation of nature, some types of fish, called cichlids, 
actually consume many of their own eggs before they hatch. Even weirder is the way these fish carry their young in their mouths. It seems that evolution may have made a mistake when it comes to these strange fish. When female cichlids become pregnant, they carry the eggs around in their mouths. This means they are unable to feed during this process, and sometimes mama gets hungry enough to eat some of her own eggs, as much as 75% in some cases. But why do they do this? One popular theory is that it's a method of staving off starvation. For evolutionary purposes, it does make sense for the mother to save herself. She can have more babies, and if she dies while carrying the babies, they will all die. Another theory is that ingesting some of the eggs will give mom a nutrient boost, which helps her breed again in the future. In many species of fish, moms have many, many eggs, seemingly as a way of ensuring at least some of the babies to survive. All of this seems pretty counterintuitive, but since this type of fish is still around, they must be doing something right. 14. Marsupials Kangaroos are probably the most popular and well-known marsupials in the world, partly because of their adorable pouches that the mothers used to carry their babies. But did you know that the babies are born far earlier than we think they are? When a mother kangaroo has a joey, she gives birth after just 12 to 33 days. The joeys are born in a very early stage of development, the human equivalent of giving birth at about 12 weeks. Essentially, the joeys are born and then they re-enter their mothers via the pouch, where they stay for months until developed enough to do so. The pouch acts as a sort of second womb. While the joey is in their mother's pouch, they rely on mom for milk, warmth, and protection. Once the joey is ready to come out, they don't exactly just hop away and begin their lives right away. They are slow to reach independence. In fact, they'll even return to mom's pouch for increasingly shorter periods of time until they no longer need to. They will hide from danger in mom's pouch and sleep there for quite a while until they reach independence. So in a way, kangaroos are born before they're born. 13. Cuckoo Catfish I think we all know of at least one deadbeat parent. The way this catfish has its babies, however, may just take the cake for being a deadbeat. Remember when we talked about cichlids and how they carry their eggs in their mouths? The cuckoo catfish has evolved to take full advantage of this strange biological process. When cichlids begin spawning, the smell will excite the female cuckoo catfish to also spawn. The catfish will allow the cichlids around until they have their eggs, and before mom can scoop them up into her mouth to carry them, the catfish will eat her eggs. And then, she will leave her own in place of the devoured cichlid eggs. This tricked the cichlid into scooping up the catfish's eggs along with any of her own surviving eggs. The cichlid will be none the wiser. And since the catfish babies hatch before the cichlid babies do, when the catfish emerge, they will eat the remaining cichlid eggs themselves. This is a complex process, which is thought to be a way for the catfish to breed as much as possible. After all, if she doesn't have to incubate or hatch her own eggs, she can go off and breed again sooner. The baby catfish are also pretty much guaranteed a meal straight away when they're being carried by the mother cichlid, and the mother catfish gets a snack in the process? These fish are crazy, but you must admit, it's pretty cool that they evolved to be so ruthless. 12. Australian Spider Wasps Q reason number 684 to avoid Australia. There are wasps that live there called spider wasps. Why? They use huntsman spiders as an unwilling host to carry their babies. Entomologist Patrick Honan explains the process. The wasps go out, seek a live huntsman, and then there is a life and death battle between the wasp and the spider. Most often, the wasp wins. The wasp then lays her egg inside the spider's abdomen you're probably wondering what happens to the spider once the egg hatches. Well, it isn't pretty. The larva will then consume the spider from the inside. It's similar to the catfish we discussed before. By choosing another animal to carry the egg, the mother is free to breed again, and the baby has a guaranteed first meal. The difference with the wasp and the spider is that the spider will not survive the experience. Other wasps reproduce in interesting ways. For example, fig wasps. Female wasps crawl inside immature figs, usually losing a wing or an antenna. 
The wasp will pollinate the figs from the inside, lay her eggs, and then pass away inside the fruit. When the larvae are ready, they mate with each other, and the males then pass away inside the fig as well. They are not born with wings, and the males will never leave the fruit. The females already fertilized will grab some pollen and take off, looking for her next fig, and so on and so on. 11. Flatworms This next story is pretty wild. Did you know that flatworms, like tapeworms, can reproduce in several different ways? The usual rules of mating and birth don't seem to apply to these little suckers. The first way that they can multiply is to, well, multiply. They can simply break off a piece of their own bodies and create two from one in an asexual process called budding. This works because this type of animal is born with both sets of reproductive organs. Another method is regular fertilization from one worm to another. The specimen acting as the male will pierce the other with its male genitalia and inject its sperm. The eggs are then stored in one of the worm segments, which will distend, similarly to a pregnant belly. While this is the type of method we're used to seeing in the animal kingdom, it's actually the least common way for these worms to multiply. They're much more likely to self-fertilize. This means they are able to essentially impregnate themselves. Then, the babies are born the same way they would be if the worm was impregnated by another. I don't know about you guys, but thinking about this one gives me the ick. Did you know these worms had so many options? No wonder there's a billion of them. 10. Platypus When you think of an animal that lays eggs, what do you think of? Most likely birds, amphibians, insects, fish, and reptiles. The platypus is actually amongst this group despite the fact that they are mammals. Egg-laying mammals are extremely rare in the animal kingdom. Almost every mammal on Earth gives birth to either a fully developed baby or a partially developed baby. Think of cats and dogs, who give birth to litters of babies that are fully developed. And kangaroos, like we mentioned before. They give birth to joeys that are not yet fully developed. But platypi are unique in that they lay eggs. Their mating rituals are also unique. Males and females avoid each other unless it's mating season, and even when they do mate, it can be a contentious affair. The males fight over mates, and mating itself can last a very long time, with males pursuing females over periods of hours. Once the females become pregnant, they lay their eggs after a few weeks, and then incubate them for another week. The babies escape their eggs by using a special tooth called an egg tooth. It's thought that the egg tooth is a vestigial leftover structure from when the platypus ancestors were reptiles. This would explain how and why the mammal platypus we see today lays eggs in the first place. They're amazingly unusual animals in a lot of other senses as well. Platypi create milk for their babies, but they don't actually have nipples. The milk is secreted from special ducts in the skin and the babies will suck it from their mother's fur. Maybe the babies have evolved to do this in order to consume certain protective bacteria from her fur. They also have incredible abilities that help them hunt. Did you know that their bills can actually sense electrical currents? Sort of like sharks, they can sense movement in areas where they would have trouble seeing prey. For sharks, it's simply because they don't see very well. For platypi, they often hunt in muddy water. 9. Giraffes did you know that giraffes carry their babies for over a year? From beginning to end, gestation could last 15 months. That's nearly twice as long as humans' average gestation time of 9 months. Unlike kangaroos and other mammals that give birth to underdeveloped babies that need to spend a lot of time with their mothers after birth, giraffes are pregnant for so long that the babies come out pretty much ready to go. In fact, when they're born, giraffes are able to stand on their long, spindly legs pretty much instantly. It seems likely that giraffes evolved this way so they could be safe from predators. Giraffes are constantly on the move, and if the babies were born as helpless as, say, baby deer, it would be very difficult for the herd to keep moving. And the craziness doesn't stop there. Did you know that giraffes give birth standing up? If you think about how tall a giraffe is, that's a really long drop for the babies, but it doesn't hurt the calves at all. The fall actually breaks the amniotic sac and the umbilical cord, and if a giraffe does give birth lying down, the babies are much more prone to injury. They can experience a kink in the neck, 
or injury to a leg or two, since they are so long and thin in so many places. 8. Kiwis Looking at a chicken and a chicken's egg would give you a very unrealistic sense of how large a kiwi's egg should be. Imagine how shocked people were the first time they saw a kiwi lay an egg almost as large as she was. The egg is actually six times bigger than eggs from similar sized birds. But why? Some experts think kiwis were at one time much bigger birds themselves, and their eggs did not shrink with the shrinking of the bird's final form. Whatever the reason, the female kiwi is sort of stuck giving birth to these enormous eggs. It's not just the size of the egg though. The yolk makes up 65% of the egg, which is the highest percentage of yolk to egg in all birds' eggs in the animal kingdom. This allows the baby kiwi to be born, you guessed it, pretty much fully developed. They hatch with full plumage and are pretty much independent from the get-go. The size of the egg also means the shell is quite strong. This is important for the chick's safety before it hatches. Rats and other animals that might be tempted to consume the egg are not able to break through the thick shell. It's easy to understand that female kiwis undergo extreme physical trauma when growing these eggs and laying them. Their bellies get so swollen and their skin stretches so much that they often soak their lower bodies in cold water toward the end of gestation. On top of that, kiwis sometimes breed as much as once a year. Because they create such robust young and breed so often, they're often called breeding machines of the animal kingdom. 7. Aphids If you have a garden, you probably know how big of an issue aphids can be. Their evolutionary advantage is the power in numbers. Think about it. They're so small, pretty much any insect or small animal can and will make aphids a meal. If the aphids weren't able to reproduce quickly enough, they would have died out long ago. Some aphids are able to have as many as 600 billion descendants. And that's not in their lifetime, that's just one mating season. So how do they do it? One reason for this impressive breeding power is that aphids multiply asexually. Males are simply not necessary in this species. A female can lay enough eggs to create a whole generation of new females, and then those babies continue on doing so. Another way they're able to do this is by predicting when they need to amp up reproduction. Aphids can grow wings if they need to. Most of the time, they don't, because they usually live out their whole lives on the same plant. But if there's a threat, or the plant is already full of aphids, the following generation will be able to grow wings to move on to a more suitable plant. 6. Prehensile-tailed porcupine Have you ever seen a porcupine? They have quills. Surely they're not born that way, right? That would be impossible. How could a female push out a baby that's spiky? Well, I have bad news. For the prehensile-tailed porcupine, that's exactly what they do. It's not as horrific as you might think. The quills aren't as sharp in the womb as they are in a fully developed adult porcupine. The quills are also encased in a sort of amniotic sac, so there's little risk to the mother from the quills. But there's more than just that danger. These animals actually give birth in trees. Most experts think the babies rarely fall from trees. This is probably a way to keep them safe from predators at the most vulnerable. When the baby is born, the amniotic sac bursts, exposing the quills to air, which hardens them. The babies are relatively quite large. The adult female usually weighs about 10 pounds, and the babies are born at around 1 pound. That's about a tenth of their mother's weight. That would be a 20-pound baby born to a mother weighing 200 pounds during pregnancy. Can you imagine if our babies were that big? The advantage of this is that the porcupines are born pretty well equipped to handle danger. Once they're weaned, they can mostly walk around by themselves, since they have those deadly quills. Fun fact, a baby porcupine is called a porcupet. 5. Naked Mole Rats Naked mole rats are unique in a lot of ways, and not just because there was a famous animated one in Kim Possible. You know how bees have a queen and worker bees to do her bidding? Naked mole rats also have a queen, and some biologists have likened their colonies to those of bees. The queen is the only female rat that breeds, and she is selective. She will only mate with the best males available in her colony. They're pregnant for about 70 days. And once the queen hits sexual maturity, she's likely to continue to breed every few months. 
Each time she is carrying a litter, the queen's body will change slightly to accommodate the babies. Her spine will actually elongate with each pregnancy. This means she will carry slightly larger litters each time. A first-time litter may be five pups, but as she grows and continues to breed, the queen will be able to give birth to as many as 30 as her body becomes more accustomed to being pregnant. How cool is that? Naked mole rats are very interesting in how they operate. The worker rats care for the babies, forage for food, and spoil the queen. The workers are physiologically capable of breeding, but they don't. If you're a female naked mole rat that isn't the queen of the colony, you will never breed. And if you're a male that isn't one of the queen's chosen mates, the same applies. The only time this changes is if one of the rats leaves the colony, which is quite rare. 4. Dolphins The more we learn about dolphins, the more unusual we realize they really are. It's long been known that they have superior intelligence compared to most animals and that they're mammals that breathe air. But it turns out they also reproduce in an unexpected way as well. Unlike most animals in the sea, dolphins have one baby or calf at a time. Also unlike most sea creatures, dolphins give birth to live calves, not eggs. That's because they're mammals. But it is easy to forget this fact about dolphins considering their marine habitat. And if you've seen this image floating around online, don't worry. Mammals are not being genetically engineered to lay chicken eggs. There's also the way dolphins give birth. Because dolphins are mammals, they're usually born tail first to minimize the risk of drowning. As soon as the baby is born, they're brought to the surface to get that first gulp of air. Did you know that dolphins can only hold the breath for a few minutes? They need to come to the surface to expel any trapped water from their blowholes and to take in more oxygen. They also never fall asleep completely. When they rest, they stay near the surface and remain partially awake. They need to, because breathing for them is not involuntary like it is for us. Humans are mammals too. Imagine what it would be like if we gave birth in the ocean. Sure, there are people who elect to have water births, but they're certainly not completely submerged, having to bring the baby up to the surface the moment they're born. 3. Elephants Have you ever seen pictures of a baby elephant? They're adorable, but absolutely massive. This is because elephants are pregnant for a whopping 23 months. That's a lot of time for the calf to grow inside of their mother. Depending on the size of their parents, the calf is usually at least 200 pounds, up to 320 pounds. Not only do elephants suffer giving birth to enormous babies and long gestation, their labor is also quite long and intensive. Labor is usually several days long. First, the mother will start having contractions, like humans. Then, she'll lose her mucus plug, which tells her that she's going to have a calf soon. Mother elephants will consciously delay labor, if she thinks she may give birth during the day. It's not safe to do so because of lurking predators. Mother elephants also tend to want to have some peace and quiet during birth, so they might prefer to do it at night. When the calf is born, the amniotic sac will protect the calf from its fall to the ground. Like giraffes, elephants have their babies standing up. The mother will then inspect the baby and blow gently on them with her trunk. Did you know that sometimes elephants have twins? They usually only have one baby at a time, like humans. Twins are rare, but it can happen. 2. Yellowhead Jawfish Remember those mouth-brooding catfish we discussed earlier? The yellow-headed jawfish does something similar, but even more unusual. The eggs are fertilized on the outside of the female's body, and then the eggs are incubated not in her mouth, but in her partner's mouth. The male will stop eating during this time, so as not to disturb the eggs. He will only focus on rotating the eggs to aerate them, sometimes also spitting them out to do so, then scooping them back up. It takes about a week for them to hatch. That's a long time the male has to go without eating. We know why some species of fish and frogs mouth brood their eggs. It gives the babies a better chance of survival. In other species of fish, when the fertilized eggs are left in a den or burrow, they're likely to be eaten by predators. That's why fish have so many eggs at once. But with mouth brooding fish, they can have smaller amounts of eggs that all have a higher chance of hatching and surviving. But we don't know why yellow-headed jawfish have evolved to have the male be the one to incubate the eggs. Perhaps they evolved this way to increase the number of times they can breed? 
nature can be really wild. 1. Octopi Pretty much everything about octopi is crazy. They can regrow limbs, they can flatten to a fraction of their size to escape dangerous situations, and they have incredible memories and intelligence. Of course, the way they reproduce is no different. The males have a special appendage that they use only for mating. It has a special groove that allows it to deposit the sperm sac into the female. Mating can last a short time, up to several hours, depending on the breed. And sometimes, females will eat parts of the male after they're done. We've seen this in other animal species as well. Usually, it's meant to provide extra nutrients and protein to the mother while she's pregnant. The special arm that males have for mating can also be broken off and saved for later. This horrifying act is thought to be used when females aren't quite ready to fertilize her eggs or if she thinks she won't come across a new mate for a while and wants to have a backup. The arm can then be used to fertilize her eggs at any time. Once the deed is done, the male will pass away. He had one job, use his genetic material to fertilize a female. Once that's been achieved, the octopus doesn't need to live any longer. The female will stay alive up until birth and then for long enough to take care of the eggs and see them hatch. But then she will also pass away. That's also why octopi don't mate young. They often spend their whole lives looking for a suitable partner to mate with. Once they've done that, they don't need to stick around. While to us that sounds quite sad, to them it's just a fact of life. Interestingly, if the gland in their brains that controls this phenomenon is removed, females will abandon her eggs and not pass away once they've been laid. That gland is what causes them to die. It shuts off their desire to eat. While this does improve their lifespan, it's not nature's way. And of course, the octopus will pass away from other causes at some point or another. Did you know that nature could be this outright insane? We'd love to hear your thoughts, especially if the seahorse story was news to you. If you like this video, please like this video. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe so you won't miss any future videos from us. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.